Okay, so uh, Article 1, whether the existence of God is self-evident, Aquinas says that it is not. So then he moves on in Article 2 to ask then, can it be demonstrated that God exists? So if the existence of God is not self-evident, uh, obviously this is a work of theology, so you know we kind of expect that God will exist. Uh, <coughs> and so he says, you know, can, can you demonstrate that? If, if it's not self-evident, can you demonstrate that God exists? Uh, and so the first objection... Uh, begins by saying, it seems that the existence of God cannot be demonstrated, for it is an article of faith that God exists, but what is of faith cannot be demonstrated, because a demonstration produces scientific knowledge, whereas faith is of the unseen. So again, we come back to this idea, the existence of God cannot be demonstrated, uh, because, uh, because again, that it, it's a matter of faith. And if, if you're demonstrating something that's supposed to be accepted on faith, then it's no longer a question of faith. Aquinas replies and says, The existence of God and other like truths about God, which can be known by natural reason, are not articles of faith, but are preambles to the article. So he says the existence of God and certain other truths about God, he says, can be known by natural reason. So therefore, so they, they can be known by reason. So they're not articles of faith. Uh, you know, the objector, to some extent, is right. Certain things, like the idea that God exists, are not articles of faith. They can be established by reason, Aquinas says. And so they're not articles of faith, they're preambles to the articles. So he says, you know, faith, and this is, again, the idea that, that philosophy, I mean, the, 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 the famous statement associated with Aquinas, that philosophy is a handmaiden of theology, has sort of different meanings. We've already seen one of the things it means is that, that uh, philosophy helps to clarify theology, or philosophy helps to clarify religious belief. Uh, but here he's also saying it can be a preamble. It can help to prepare people by proving the existence of God. It can help make them more receptive uh, to, to, to what religion is specifically Christianity teaches. So he says the existence of God can be known by natural reason, so it's kind of like a preamble to the articles of faith. The existence of God, not accepted on faith, it can be proved by reason, so it's not an article of faith, it's kind of like a preamble, something that prepares you for the more specific claims about God that are made by Christianity, which, which do need to be accepted on faith. Then he says, for faith presupposes natural knowledge, even as grace presupposes nature, and perfection supposes something that can be perfected, a very important idea for Aquinas, the idea that, as he puts it, grace presupposes nature. Uh, the natural world, including natural human reason, has not been so damaged or changed or corrupted through human sin that, 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 uh, that, that grace, divine action, is actually contrary to it or needs to transform it or something. Aquinas, again, uh, you know, this obviously kind of explains, goes along with his great... Uh, uh, respect for Aristotle. Uh, he says, you know, again, the, the, the grace presupposes nature, but nature is kind of naturally inclined to it. So he says, uh, again, you know, faith presupposes natural knowledge. Natural knowledge prepares us for faith. Again, the natural world, natural human reason is not so corrupted by sin that, that it's somehow you know, against or contrary to, to religious faith. Aquinas says it, it prepares us for it, just like human nature is sort of, and grace presupposes nature. It doesn't have to go against it because nature is so corrupt or sinful. It presupposes nature as something to be perfected. Uh, so, you know, so Aquinas uh, sort of says that, and then he goes on and says, and, but in any case, there's nothing to prevent a man who cannot grasp a proof, accepting as a matter of faith something which in itself is capable of being scientifically known and demonstrated. So again, a, he says, if someone can't quite follow the proof, can't understand it on the basis of reason alone, he says, that's fine. There's nothing that stops them from, from accepting it on faith. It's just as legitimate. It's, it's fine. But again, he says, you know, that this is not, the existence of God is not an article of faith. It's something that can be proved using reason, and therefore, as he puts it again, it's a preamble to faith. Uh, so the, the second objection, um, the uh, second objection is somewhat technical. We'll basically just uh, skip that. The third objection is that since God's effects are not proportioned to him, since God is obviously of a different order of being than his effects, we can, he cannot be known from them. So basically what Aquinas will argue is that we can prove the existence of God based on his effects, based on the, the effects that God has produced as a cause. And the objector kind of, you know, anticipates that and says, you can't know God from his effects because the effects that, that we can see of God, you know, the effects in the physical world around us are of a totally different, you know, sort of order of being than, than God himself. So one of Aquinas' arguments is for motion. He says we can see things are in motion. We'll, we'll get to this in, in the, next, uh, the next lecture. He says we can see things are in motion, therefore we can reason back from that uh, to God. And the objector says, but you can't do that because the fact that you see physical things in motion that's just a, something that, that's just so different from the actual existence, from the actual, uh, from, from God himself, uh, that, that you can't reason back from, from these sort of physical causes or these causes that we can see and, and experience ourselves 
to God who is beyond anything that we can that we can see or, or comprehend or experience. Uh, so he says, you know, you, you just can't do that. Uh, and Aquinas replies and says, it's true God cannot be known perfectly from his effects, but his existence can be demonstrated. So he says, it's true, you know, God's effects are not proportionate to God himself. Therefore, we can't arrive at any kind of perfect or exhaustive or, or absolute knowledge of God based on his effects. But again, we can prove the existence of God based on these effects. We can reason back from them to show the existence of God. So he says, you know, from every effect, the existence of the cause can be demonstrated. Uh, so basically, uh, in, in the responsio where he explains his own position, uh, he says the existence of God cannot be demonstrated from the cause. So he says we don't know God. We don't know God well enough to prove his existence based on our knowledge of God, because again, we just, we just don't know God well enough to do that. We can't, we can't demonstrate from the cause, but from the effects, uh, at least those effects that, uh, that, that are actually known to us. Uh, so basically what, he, what Aquinas is suggesting here is it's something a little bit like I, it's almost like, um, I mean, obviously it's not as, as grim or unfortunate, but it's almost a little bit like a murder mystery where you have, you have things like a dead body and, and, and a weapon and you, you try to reason back, okay, here's an effect. Somebody produced this effect, this dead body. Now let's try to reason back and figure out who did it. So we have certain evidence and we reason back trying to figure out, well, how did this happen? Uh, and, you know, if it's like if there, there's, you know, a knife in their back in a part where they couldn't reach, and you say, well, maybe he did it himself. Well, no, that's that's not very convincing. Uh, so, so you know, so we have evidence that something happened, and we have to try to go back and figure out uh, who did it and, and how and why. And, you know, and so he might, you know, so in the idea is he says, you know, we can't reason from the cause. So if, you know, if we, a, a playful example from the from the game of Clue, if we end up deciding Professor or, uh, Colonel Mustard did it uh, in the study with the candlestick or something, Aquinas says we can't necessarily reason back and understand the essence of Colonel Mustard so much that we know why he did it exactly. But we can at least establish it was Colonel Mustard with, with the, with the uh, candlestick or whatever. Uh, so, you know, so we can reason back and we can establish certain things based on the effects that we can observe. Again, we can't necessarily know the absolute, uh, the absolute you know, essence of God, just like we can't always you know, know the essence of people from reasoning back and figuring out this person must have done that. But we have effects, and there's always a cause for an effect. So Aquinas says when we see certain effects uh, in the world that cannot be ultimately explained by what we see around us, then we realize there must be God. God must be the cause of these effects. And that's, uh, that's what he does in the, uh, in the famous uh, uh, five ways. And basically, you know, uh, in, in uh, question one, he had talked about whether or not the existence of God is self-evident. Uh, so in, in the responsio here, he says demonstration can be made in two ways. One is through the cause and is called a priori. And this is to argue from what is prior absolutely. So basically, the, the first attempt was to say, can we, can, is, the God, is, is the existence of God self-evident, or can it in some sense be proved from the God, a, from, from the cause, uh, or, or proved a priori, sort of before any experience? Can it be understood just by analyzing the, 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 uh, the, uh, the meaning of the word God, or things like that? And Aquinas obviously said no. So he says the other is, is through the effect and is called a demonstration a posteriori, uh, that is to argue from what is prior relatively only to us. So in other words, a posteriori, here he's sort of arguing from experience. So he says, you know, we can't argue from the cause. We don't know the, the, the God well enough. We don't know the cause. We can't establish the existence of God based, based purely on, on, you know, the fact that he causes the universe or or uh, on, on, uh, on sort of purely abstract analysis of what the, what the uh, meaning of the word God is. But he says we can argue from, from, what, from our experience, from the effects that we see of God, and again, we can reason back to establish the existence of God in that way. And those are the famous uh, five ways which we'll talk about next.